but it's an honor to have, and especially as a black man, to have them on the show and for me to be able to support their initiative, which brings me to my next guest that I'm uh, super excited about because, you know, the one thing that I, I, I love to do, right, is give people their flowers while they're here. And, yeah. and this lady is not only do I consider her like, uh, just, I mean, she is, she's a, she's an icon in Philadelphia and I don't think that she gets her just desserts, but she's going to talk a little bit about what she has coming up. Um, you know, Miss Cheryl Ann Wellington, and, and we want everybody to go and support and endorse and, and vote for her. And she'll talk a little bit about that. And I'm gonna bring her back on because we want to talk some fashion. I don't think you guys know you don't you don't know anything about fashion in Philadelphia without her, right? And so before we go any go anywhere, I want to add to the stream and let everybody take a listen. And we're going, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about Miss Sherland Wallington and some of the things that she's doing. I'm going to bring Miss Sherland on right now and I'm going to let her introduce. I'm going to let her introduce this clip because I want you guys to see this. I don't think you understand the importance of um, pretty much the importance of some of the things that she's doing. And so this is a dynamic clip. And I think it was important because she's working with these youth, these youth and these beautiful black little girls who um, are getting uh, confidence, who are getting, you know, feeling empowered. And a lot of that has a lot to do with Miss Shirley Ann Wallington. So without further ado, I want to bring to the show Miss Shirley Ann Wallington. How are you? Hello, Charles, and hello to the fantastic ladies. Hello, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. So, so what I'm going to do, because I want everybody to see this clip. I mean, you've seen it. We're going to try to work out the audio, but I want you to kind of, you know, intro it and talk a little bit about what people will be seeing in this clip. Yeah. So what I do uh, on the nonprofit side, I work with empowering and educating young girls of color, particularly black girls. Um, and I don't do it just because I want to have a program and they need to be groomed. I do it because there are a lot of outstanding issues that are facing young black girls. And um, I was once an incorrigible girl who used to get in trouble all the time. Um, and it happened when I lost my daddy. So earlier on, I said to myself, well, how many girls little black girls are there out there without a daddy? And then what happens when they don't have that man in their life? Because I'm sure you young ladies know there's nothing like a daddy's love. And um, of course, in my case, when I lost him in the sixth grade, I started looking for you know attention in all the wrong places. So I was eventually sent to reform school. So I know what it's like to work with underserved girls. So that's what I do. Um, majority of the girls that we serve at the Everlore House, uh, and, and I'm going all over the place, but the Everlore House is a nonprofit organization that empowers and educates uh, underserved girls of color. We've been around for 16 years. And so far, um, our mission is to make sure girls from underserved communities graduate high school on time, attend a four-year college, and to help break the cycle of intergenerational poverty. So, so far we've graduated 2,000 young girls of color. There are 100% of our girls are going to a four-year college or some other form of post-education. Many are earning advanced degrees. They're going to top colleges and they're coming out of college uh, for the most part. They're going to college on full ride scholarships and coming out of college debt free. So without thank you for that. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and play this clip. And I want everybody to just hold tight and listen because it's so dynamic. We'll be right back. The Everlore House was founded because of the disparity with girls of color. I come from a humble background and there weren't many opportunities just presented to me. We know if we can empower them, they can go into their communities and be a part of the change that we all want to see. The Everlore House has given me something that can't be brought or learned in a $40,000 a year school. It was confidence. 
Did you see all these tears? This is from the heart. Our girls deserve better and we have to fight and we have to stop thinking that any little old thing is good enough for them because it's not. Our girls are usually people who are the first in their family to attend college. So where they've risen from is an absolute miracle. The girls that we are grooming are gonna be the next generation leaders. I'm proud to say that I am an Evelyn girl. Wow. That was beautiful. It was, was beautiful. It was in my eyes just watching them. Yeah, I did too. And I've been dealing with it for 16 years. And I tell you, again, there is a need and actually a healing that has to take place, which is what I talk about. And I think you young ladies can clearly understand. I mean, we all can go to college and be fabulous, but we are still judged differently and looked upon differently. And there are certain aspects of us where we just can't feel free, right? Well, uh, where other girls from other cultures, they can, they can walk in a room and not have to worry about people judging them because they're, they have dark skin. So what we do with our girls is to teach them how to be able to navigate career and life as a black girl and um, live free while they're fighting for their freedom because it haven't stopped, you know, as you can see with the climate in the world. So that's what we do um, at Everlore House. We heal, we empower, and we educate. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh, see, you're muted. I'm sorry about that. So I want to talk a little bit about you know, what you have going on, because I want to give you time to be able to talk about oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And so you are in the running and, you know, we, we want everybody to go out and vote. It's about a little, I guess, a little over a week left to go out and support. So why don't you just address this a little bit and talk about and how important it is for you uh, specifically to be in the running for this and how big this is? Because this is this is like an international thing. This isn't just local. Yeah, I was one of 10 women in the world to be uh, selected for the L'Oreal Paris Women of Worth Award. So with that award came a $10,000 donation to our nonprofit, the Evalor House. Um, and with uh, that, we also have the opportunity to win 25 more thousand dollars, one of us, one of us, 10 nominees, and that is uh, going to happen through online voting. So we're asking all of Philadelphia, and I know this may be worldwide, I don't know how far your reach is, but we want everybody who's listening or who's watching it right now to go online to womenofworth.com and vote for Cheryl Ann Wadlington so that uh, $25,000 can be awarded to our uh, nonprofit so we can expand our programs in next year. And, um, you know, I can't stress enough how much wellness and mental health uh, sessions we're going to have to add on because of what the girls are experiencing right now with the COVID-19 pandemic and, of course, being out of school. So we know every girl is not getting a full education. And we know that a lot of girls are going through things because um, they're watching their family members either get sick, get infected or die. So we have a lot of work that we have to do uh, next year. So we need that money. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you can vote every day for a 20, every 24 hours. Uh, you can vote up until November the 27th. And like you said, it's about a week and a half away. So I hope everybody votes and we're pushing. We want to win that money to help save our girls. That's right. That's right. So mm -hmm. everybody, if you're listening, if you're watching, we want you to go and vote because this uh, initiative is, is a very great initiative, especially for, you know, our black little girls out there to see this in the work that she has been putting in for over oh, it's long. This is this has been a long journey that she has been helping and empowering the youth. This isn't something that just happened overnight. This isn't an organization that just kind of started and you know you won't hear from them. They'll get your money and then you won't hear from them anymore. You're talking about somebody who has 
changed lives. And we're we're asking that you go and support her. Uh, if you're watching again, all those who's watching now and will be watching this uh, rebroadcast, make sure you go out and vote and vote and vote. And so uh, just, just real quick before we let you go, because I have a few questions for you. How can they get in contact with you and, sure. and follow some of the things that you're doing? Okay, well, there are three things. They can go to our website at evalorehouse.org. So Evalor, and it's just the French word for evolve, okay? It's spelled E-V-O-L-U-E-R-H-O-U-S-E dot O-R-G. Uh, so they can go to our website. They can follow us on Twitter. It is at Evalor House. They can follow us on Instagram at The Evalor House. Um, so we're easy to find. You can Google Cheryl Ann Waddlington or The Evalor uh, House. Where I'm very accessible. Um, and the, where you go to vote again is at womenofworth.com. But one more surprise. Can I add? A, can I tell you the other part of what's going to be happening? Yes, you can. So for the first time ever, they're going to be doing a primetime special on NBC, um, uh, L'Oreal Paris, or the Women of Worth special. So there's going to be a one-hour special where you can see all of us on NBC on uh, November 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I want all y'all to tune in to watch Miss Cheryl and the other Ooh. wonderful young ladies. Fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, yes, yes. I know y'all have a few questions, ladies. I'm sorry. I kind of was hogging all the time for you. Go ahead. No doubt. <laughs> I'm trying to vote. Oh, I'm go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, yeah, I myself would love to see you awarded the money um, because I feel like there is a culture right now, especially when it comes to social media and music, where a lot of young Black women are looking at social media influencers and um, female rappers who are talking about um, stripping or, or they, there's been a culture where stripping is has become popular. And um, I feel like a lot of young women are being influenced um, negatively when it comes to things like that and, and the misconceptions that they see on social media and that they hear in music um, where it's like, making them want to be, you know, like the people that they see or they hear versus, you know, just um, being themselves and, and, and um, being young, black, beautiful women and, and awesome contributors to uh, the community. So I, I would love to know what are your thoughts about that? And like, you know, just um, young, sending a message out to young black girls that you know <laughs> that what they see on there is not uh, necessarily what they should be doing <laughs> so you know what i and this is one of the reasons why we started Everlord house because we know there's a lot of i would say uh not so good images out there for our girls with this whole reality tv and um even some in, in the music industry and young girls want to emulate people like for say if they see uh beyonce or Nicki minaj half naked on stage they want to they think that they can do it but what they have to understand that these women are entertainers they don't live in the real world they have bodyguards so you know they have people to protect them um also what we say to girls i can tell you i get in a lot of trouble because i have a standard right so young girls need role models and i push myself out there i push myself in their faces and let them know what greatness looks like you see so that's one thing that they're lacking. You know, they don't see greatness, you know, and, and we have conversations with young girls all the time with my students and they say, oh, well, this person can sing and that person can sing. And, I, you know, I don't mean everybody can have their own opinion and we do talk and I allow them to express who they um what they want to say, what they want to say. But I also tell them what a good voice is, what a voice, what a vocal is. Um, so they'll understand that a lot of the stuff that they hear is not really a voice, it's computer generated, right? To know the difference between, uh, again, greatness and, uh, you know, I say, uh, what I could even say, you know, like trash and garbage. Um, but it's so important for us, I would say, you young ladies and everybody out there, I understand that there is a psychosis in um, the black community. Some of us don't even understand what we're doing and how what we do will have an impact on young girls. So we can't always be a part of the people who are just talking, right? And we have to be more a part of the solution. So I shouldn't have a hard time 
asking for money from my own community to save our girls, you know, but then you'll go back and talk about her. So I say, if you're going to talk about her or don't talk about her unless you're willing to lift her up. So um, there's a lot of cleaning up we have to do. And I think the bucks, the buck starts with with us. It really does, because if our girls saw better role models, they wouldn't have to emulate what they see um, mm -hmm. on social media. And then, you know, I get in trouble all the time. People lay me out because I speak on it. You know, and I say, uh -uh, no, you know, you can't come and talk to my girls, you know, half naked or something like that. No, you can't mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> So you do have to speak up because I know some of your mothers would say something, you know, there are some things that you just aren't tolerable for a young girl to see. Mm -hmm. She has to see greatness. I we watch entertainers on television because I would say that all the time. They're wearing that because they're performing something on a stage yeah <laughs> same outfit and like wear it to the grocery store and it doesn't, yeah. doesn't work that's not what that is it's not what it's for um mm -hmm. but it you have to go deeper and and discuss why they're doing it or why they want to look like that what is it that they're trying to attract or what is it that they think is is going to make them better in some kind of way by by looking like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it touches on a lot of different issues. I mean, you talk about, you know, you, you mentioned earlier about um, the fathers in their lives, but also um, self-esteem and just education and just knowing um, and from here and what makes you happy and knowing and learning yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and our beauty. What is considered black beauty? You know, mm -hmm. I had a conversation with Miss Wendy Williams about that. Okay. You know, I remember when she was, and I'll speak about it because, you know, we need to talk. We can talk, you know, okay. as a community and as sisters. And uh, she was telling everybody that they should go and get plastic surgery, uh, telling this to girls of color. And I said to myself, you know, the girls were like a size eight and, and to go get liposuction as an eight. So, you know, there was something wrong there. So I had to explain to her that having uh, round bodies and big butts and the, the luscious curvy butts, that's a part of our culture. And at that time I was skinny. I didn't have all that, you know, no, I wasn't, you know, like the you know girls in my culture <laughs> and I was actually jealous. So, um, but there's a disconnect where apparently she didn't even know what black beauty was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, and her and I had that conversation and, and um, I explained it to her and she actually said to me, she said, no one ever told me that. So just imagine how many girls are out here listening to her, you know, or um, they don't have that identity you know, of knowing mm -hmm. what beauty, what black beauty is or what a, what a girl of color, what her beauty attributes are. Absolutely. And I, and I love what you said about don't talk about them, but talk to them. So, you know, there are a lot of times, you know, you know, at, with us as women and women of all, all cultures, um, you shouldn't want to bring other women down. You know, we're supposed to lift each other up. Mm -hmm. So especially if you see some of the, the younger generation, you know, don't talk about them, mm -hmm. teach them, mm -hmm. talk to them because they may just not know, you know what I mean? And they may not have those role models in their lives and they may not have a program or even know about your program. Like, you know, <laughs> that you have, you know what I mean? But I love that because this is stuff that we can share mm -hmm. um, because you don't have, you know, some people don't, everybody's upbringing is different. You know, That's true. I, I was raised Catholic. So my upbringing was totally different from, a, you know, a lot of other, other people. Um, and so, yeah, you don't talk about them, but talk to them and, and, and help them or pray for them. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You know, right. don't, and don't but understand talk about them differences. You see, like you said, you were raised Catholic. Well, I'm a preacher's kid, but then you have other girls who come from privileged backgrounds when, you know, so, um, like I just met you ladies, but as far as I'm concerned, you are my sisters. Okay. And then we don't have to get along. We don't have to agree. I mean, you could be crazy. I'm still going to love you, you know, because I'll say that's just my little crazy sister. 
<laughs> you know, I love her to death and I'll be there to have her back. But the differences we have in each other, because, you know, a lot of times people want you to be like them, walk like them, act like them. So we have to get so beyond that. And I always teach our girls, I say, you know what, these 50 girls in these class, these are your sisters for life. And to kind of break that cycle of women feeling threatened by one another, or not provo promoting that other woman, we have to move beyond that. You know, we should be promoting each other in the workplace. You know, rarely do you hear that. It's usually a man that promotes that other woman. So there's a whole nother conversation that I have to bring in through the work that we do. The girls learn all kinds of things from sexual help to financial literacy, you know, they, they come out empowered and strong and they learn how to understand their power, you yeah. see, mm. as women. And that is so important. I love what you said about them being sisters for life once they've been in that class together. Because one of the things you said earlier is that they're some of them are the first in their families to go to college. But I'm sure there are some, this is their first family. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, some of them don't even have family. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have family, you don't have people, you know, around you like family that can, you know, help with these things and teach these things. That's why they just don't know. So, no, yeah. Thank you so much for all that you do. And everybody, listen, I voted already. This is where you're going to go. You're going to see her face right there. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is what it looks like on the app. But yes, definitely vote. <laughs> Yeah. And again, they don't know how much the girls in our community are suffering. That's another thing, um, you know, from whether they're uh, being going through the school push out of, and being pumped from school into the prison pipeline. Right now, the fastest growing population in prison is young girls of color. And then they mm. don't know that 40 percent of the girls being trafficked are black girls. But that's not the face you see. And so we're concerned because right now young girls are being snatched right in front of their home, you know. So mm. um, and then once they're arrested, they're being falsely accused of being arrested for prostitution where well, they weren't prostitutes they were kidnapped yes. so it's just so much and even like there's things like if you have dark skin in school Villanova, Villanova University found out that you're three times more likely to get suspended if you're a black girl with darker skin so there's so much that we have to do to make sure our girls are strong and that they can navigate this world who judges them differently and wow. it's no fault of our own. We, we're just here and we exist. But, you know, we ought to be able to have a piece of, of the pie and live free and to be able to accomplish great things in the world, just like Kamala Harris. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I'm I'm glad that you brought that up because I was just getting ready to ask you. Um, America has elected its first black woman vice president mm -hmm. who has said that black women were the backbone of this election. What opportunities are you hoping that happens for black women during um, Biden administration's tenure in the office? Well, I'll tell you this. I don't want any of us to sit back and hope for anything. I think uh, I want us to make sure we get it. OK, so, uh, you know, I'll say this to you now, you know, don't sit back and wait and expect them to do everything. Um, you go right to them and say, this is what our issue is and this is what we like to see uh, you do and have more control over the people that you elected now you know you elected her okay so she didn't just get there by walking through the door but we have to hold them accountable you know and i i don't just say that but i practice that through my program i'm not waiting for anybody to save our girls i'm going out there and do what i can and i want us i would like to see us um take more control of our future because you have power but, and I just told one of my girlfriends tonight, you just have to use it. I say, use it or lose it. Awesome. Awesome. I just, I just um, wanted to add that I just did my vote also. Okay. So I just voted too. Okay. And then when you, when you vote, there's also an option to share on Facebook and Twitter. So if you want to um, share with your um, Twitter and Facebook family and friends, go ahead and share and encourage them to vote also. I'm, doing it right now. <laughs> well, thank, you. thank you. You're welcome. We can't My hear pleasure. You. I just want to jump in real fast and just um shout out Eli. Um she voted too. She just jumped on and said she voted. So, you know, that's that's a beautiful thing to be able to have a platform to assist in, you know, the support of the of people who look like us. And you know, I'm unapologetically <laughs> black. 
I am. And, you know, to for me to be able to support like my sisters, to, to support my people, this is what I'm going to do um, until until I'm not breathing anymore. Because if no one does it, somebody has to. So we have to continue to support each other. We have to continue to, you know, just kind of endorse and start endorsing the community. And I think that's something that's missing is, right it now. It is holding each other uh, up. Yes, yes. And one thing, one thing, uh, and that's great. She just said that she's going to go in and spread the word. And I'm excited about that. Keep spreading the word, guys. Um, for those who's just tuning in, who's who has been on right now, just make sure you continue to vote, vote for the sister because she needs that money to support our black black girls, man. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Real quick, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about you know the importance of being frank because you <laughs> <laughs> you 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 have never uh pulled any punches when it when it came to you know speaking truth speaking truth to power yes yeah, truth truth to power and i wanted you to Love go it. a little bit further into that why have you been so transparent when it comes to even some of the you know things that you have experienced why are you so frank without feeling the need to sugarcoat well because um, I'm led by God, you know, I'm led by a power that's bigger than me. So um, now God may not tell me to say it the way I say it, <laughs> but I know um, my, my work, I'm doing God's work. Um, I have that like gift of discernment and um, I was raised by a lot of activists. Okay, so I got to see how people were able to force change. Like my mother, she marched in the march, march on Washington alongside Dr. King. Um, I saw her hold meetings in our home to force the change that she wanted to see when she thought that black children weren't being educated fairly in the school system. Uh, her and at that time, the Senator Hardy Williams, um, they were um, a strong force behind getting a school built in West Philadelphia so black children wouldn't have to walk through violent neighborhoods to go to school. And that's the elementary school that I went to. So I was able to see change. And then my brother was an activist when he saw that um, black people were dying of HIV um, in the 80s. He decided to work with a wonderful woman, Rashida Hassan, and help develop the organization called Babashi that still stands today. My brother passed away, but that organization serves 20,000 people a year. So I got a chance. So I, I always used to hear them say, we don't have time to play. And we don't. So why, I mean, you know, you have people in this world who are different, you know, everybody, every, <laughs> you know, I'm different. I always knew it was different. And one thing my mother told me too, which I think attributes to what you asked, you said, how come I'm so frank? Um, she always told me, she said, you know, girl, you don't have to be like everybody else. So mm -hmm. why did she tell me that? And I mean, that stuck with me to this day. So I think I purposely did everything I could so I wouldn't have to be like everybody else. I want it to be different. I honor it and I love it. So um, I don't say anything really hurtful to people. I say what needs to be said and then get it over with. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. You know, at this point, I want to bring, um, you know, one of our correspondents in Lili, because I think you you speak to, you know, um, girls who look like her, who's who 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 look like us. You know, shout out to Lili. I know you've been listening backstage, Lili, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I want you to um just chime in and you know what questions would you have for Miss Sherlyn Wellington and have you voted yet? She, she's already yes. on. I already I, I already knew she girl. Would. <laughs> yes, I voted while you were talking. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Um, I guess my question would be, do you hope to take, so like, do you hope what you're doing is something that you want to take like across the nations wise mm. with these other ladies? Well, you know, let me tell you something. Um, you, when you, like sometimes when you do things, people always try to, make you think that you have to save the whole world, right? You may only have fifty dollars, but <laughs> you know, they will they put they because they do that in nonprofit. They want to give you a penny and say save the whole world. I thank God that I have people around me who can help me with my walk and how I lead in the direction I want to go. Um 
we've already been honored at the White House. I mean, we've had our program in Bermuda. We get calls from Africa um, and from all around the world, from London to do the program there. We get calls and I just get emails the other day from some of the largest girl serving organizations in the country. And this is what's so interesting. We started this organization with 24 Cent in the Bank. We're a small grassroots organization doing powerful things and bringing the power, you know? And um, and I guess a lot of that has to do with my upbringing. You know, I had the opportunity to do a lot of great things and accomplish a lot in my career so I can bring that to this. But um, my, I've always wanted quality over quantity. So, um, you see, when it comes to our girls, they, you know, it's a lot that we got to heal from. You know, yeah. we can't do it in a year. You know, when I see black girls who are cutting themselves, right? We got a lot of black girls who are cutting themselves and they're doing it because, you know, when we talk to them, they say, oh, because I was raped. All right. And they'll say, and I don't want to uh, ever look at a man again. So I'm turning gay. You know, all the stories are just amazing. So I I don't, I, I'm not so, I don't know if you ladies remember what happened at Oprah's school um, with the little incident where the girl was a um, molestation oh, yeah. charge happened. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. And I always look at that. I say, if it can happen at her school and she hires the best and the brightest. Um, when you're talking about young girls, see, our girls are vulnerable in a different kind of way. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're almost like, um, almost like targets waiting for people to come in and try to take advantage of them. So I, I don't, I'm not really um, interested right now in expanding it. You know, again, that's uh, quality. I want, I want quality, quality, not quantity. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what um, advice would you offer to another uh, black woman who is contemplating doing what you're doing, but doesn't know how to start or, you know, just unsure or nervous. You know how some people get when they're nervous about starting a business and they talk themselves out of it. Like what advice would you offer to someone? Well, Charles, I think you could answer that for me. You know what I'm going to, you can imagine what I'm going to say. <laughs> you can imagine what I'm going to say. And I have to be dignified here. I <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to um, tap your power. Right. And this is where I, I feel like I want like a lot of young girls to just be around me, you know, to walk unapologetically. You know, you say, well, she said this about me or this happened. I'm like, so, so what? And I think you really got to understand what your power is. Um, and once you get that confidence, because the fact that she's afraid is saying, OK, well, then maybe there are some things going on in society that would make her think what she's thinking. You see, mm -hmm. so this goes back to the idea for women of color to start having more unity um, and conversation where we can sit down and tell each other the truth about what's going on with us. You know, whether we're blind, crippled or crazy, but and to have and to be in an environment where we're not going to be judged, you know, um, mm -hmm. because you'd be surprised because there's always somebody there who's going to hold your hand and to help lift you up, to help you walk through this crazy world that we live in <laughs> yeah. that's what we need we need each other we need we could like i always tell our girls i say where you are weak i am strong you know and where you're strong i am weak and we are there to lift each other up and like i say again blind cripple or crazy yeah. I don't need to preach to y'all. Okay. I, I don't need to preach. I can't wait here to talk about L'Oreal Paris. <laughs> well, that's a, that, that's a great transition. Let's go ahead and, you know, just because time is flying so fast. And, you know, I, you know, I could talk to you all day, every day. I'm going to bring you back on so we could talk about some fashion later on. But I want you to go ahead and talk about, uh, you know, them vote and why should they come out and vote? And what is it? Yeah, women, um, well, everybody in the world really needs to vote for Cheryl Ann Wadlington for the L'Oreal Paris Woman of Worth National Honoree and to help our organization to win an additional $25,000 so we can expand our programs and after school activities for underserved girls of color. It is more critical now than ever that we save our girls. And to vote, you can vote every day, Every 24 hours, just go to womenofworth.com. 
um, and vote, vote, vote. There you go. Yeah. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Before I let you leave, hold on one second. I gotta do the legal ID that fast. This time is flying. What's up, y'all? You listening to uh We Talk Weekly, and this is WPPMLP Philadelphia 106.5 FM. And this is We Talk Weekly after the talk with the beautiful Lauren We got Lily in the building, we got Lady S dot, and we got the beautiful beautiful Miss Cheryl Ann Wallington talking about the reason why you should go ahead and vote for her. For I'm gonna bring it up one more again. L'Oreal Paz, woman of worth. Go and vote. You can find her at womanofworth.com. Of vote. Make sure you vote. You can vote until November 27th. The Avalor House founder and executive director, Cheryl Ann Wallington. 2020 make sure you go out and vote so before i let you leave you got to tell everybody how can they get in contact with you how can they find you and all that good old stuff yes they can get in touch with me and can i tell you i want to tell everybody don't call me with no nonsense okay (laughs) (laughs) because i have a lot of work to do and i'm trying to save lives so (laughs) we can reach us (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> on our website, go to evalorehouse.org. <laughs> I love it. org, And um, we're, we are looking to partner with people. Uh, we're looking for people who are skilled in certain areas, who are really skilled uh, for programming uh, next year. So go to evalorehouse.org and you can find out how to contact us. And then the other website, again, is Women at Work dot com to vote for us. So make sure you vote, ladies and gentlemen. That was the Akshi. Miss, listen, Miss Wellington is an icon in Philadelphia, and I'm gonna bring her back on so we can talk a little bit about fashion. You know, that's my my lane, and so we're gonna talk about some fashion, some some things, and you're gonna find out a little bit more about her in that you know arena. You're talking about nationally published, but I'm not going to go into that. But this is so, this is an ongoing conversation, and one of the things that we always say um, is that once you come on to the show, you're a friend to the show, so you're always welcome to come back, and I Thank truly you. appreciate you for coming on the show, and if there's anything else that we can do for you, you know, I'm just a call away, but you know that already. Yes, yes, and I want to take this moment to thank you, too. He has... Uh, uh, Gregory, I call him Gregory, I call him Greg, I call him Charles. He has always been a special young man. Now you're going to hear me talk like a mama, right? (laughs) (laughs) He has just been a decent young man. You know, if I would ever have children, I would want him to be my son. He's just, and he's, wait, well, he's stylish, first of all, and he's unique in his own way. And you ladies know he has his own sense of style. I mean, he is just a gem. And I've always admired him. um, And I appreciate him, you know, and and, um, you are just magnificent. And I'm so proud. And I sound old when I say this, like, look, I'm proud of the way you turned out, right? (laughs) And you continue to inspire because you are just one special young man. Thank you. you gotta bless you. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Thank you. I thank you so much for saying that because he deserves all those accolades. And as you can see, his face is making him very uncomfortable to hear. Oh, because <laughs> he deserves it. He does. And then again, yeah. we have to honor our special people. You know how they always wait till you're dead to honor mm-hmm. you. And i tell you something else, Lady. I know you guys got to go. And that's one vow that I had. I said, I'm not going to wait till they're wheeling me up in a chair um, to get an award. I'm going to make them honor me before I'm on a cane. You see what I mean? Make them give you your props now. You know, so work that hard to get it and earn it. Like a lot of people don't earn or deserve some of the stuff they get. You know, in this culture, you know, we could talk a whole nother conversation. So, yeah. mm-hmm. these wow. wannabes, speak that truth. Speak that truth. So yeah. Yeah. Honey, and I always say, I don't know what they want to be, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're so we're so proud of our Charles Gregory. Yeah. He, he's everything. All those things that you said, he is the epitome of that, and we are I'm so fine. proud of him. And just <laughs> happy. <laughs> he supports us in so many ways, and it's you know, as a black woman who, you know, we wear a lot of hats and we don't always get the support and recognition that we want or that we need that helps us to keep going, but he's constantly motivating us and supporting us and 
Isn't just that wonderful? giving us yes, yes, and it's so awesome to have a black king, you know, just supporting us. So can we all clap way. for him right now? Let's yeah. give it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't even do the show now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to celebrate yourself sometimes. I had to learn that too. You know, even though I know we're humble and we do it because we love people, but also mm -hmm. celebrate the triumphs that you have. You have this team of wonderful young women, you know, and you guys are doing just magnificent things together. That's all beautiful. You know, you got to like just appreciate that beauty, you know, because I just arrived on this virtual thing and I appreciate all of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. I, um, this, but this moment, I wanted it to be about you. This moment is about you. <laughs> it is. It is. It's about. But, but in that, we are espousing a lot of joy and greatness. You see what I'm saying? You can yeah. do a lot. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're it. You're that. Yeah. We can't deny that. But also, you know, I claim my diva. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's why I loved you. Yeah. Yeah. But I work for it. I did. I worked for it. You know, yeah. so I'm not just making it up. Yeah, yeah. That's why I want to um, make sure that we bring you back on the show, because I want to talk about your life um, long journey and, and a lot of the strides and, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the seeds that you have planted for, you know, Philadelphians and a lot of people across, around the world that, you know, again, I don't think you get your just desserts, but as long as I'm alive and I got a platform, you always going to be around. And um, I'm going to make sure that I trumpet you and I, I salute you and I'm going to always support you. And we're going to continue to support and promote and vote, vote, vote. I can almost yeah. guarantee you're going to win this thing because yeah. we're going to push you. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And can I tell you, I'm a, I'm a humble girl, right? Like, I'll just look, help my babies, you know, help my yes. babies. That's what I'm saying. Help me help my babies. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. So you got to uh, make sure you promise to come back on soon. We're going to have you. I think we're going to make sure that we have you on a little bit more. We want to do some shows with you and everything, oh, you know? God, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. And it just depends on what the show is about because I tell you, I'm still adjusting to this uh, Generation Z, honey. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm still adjusting. Like I always say, as girls, we should have our voice, but you know, I'm, I'm adjusting to them. <laughs> yeah. Out. Where do you have it, ladies and gentlemen? Miss Cheryl Lamb Wallington, iconic. Make sure you go and vote. Womansworth.com, womanofworth.com. Go and vote as the Lower House founder, executive director, Cheryl Ann Wallington 2020. Laurel Paris, woman of worth. Go and vote right now for her. Let's get her this money support these black girls let's support our own and something that she didn't say that i actually know already you know i'm i'm unapologetically black and once you see all the people who's running you're going to see she's the only one so we definitely need to get her up there and support her real quick how can i get in contact with you one more time one more again yes they can go to our website and go to evelorhouse.org and to vote they can go to uh womenofwork.com and i want to say that we work with all girls of color native american latina um, um indian so it's girls of color teen yeah. girls of color that's right. That's right. There you go. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your boy Charles Gregory. And we have our special guest, Miss Shirley and Wallington. We really appreciate you. Thank you. And you know, I love you, love you, love you, love, love you. Love you, love you ladies. Y'all stay strong. Okay. Stay fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>